This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Woman charged with attempted murder of her husband granted bail. Vanessa Johnson Lee, the businesswoman who was last week charged with attempted murder, is to return to court on October 4 after being offered bail in the sum of $400,000. Johnson Lee was brought before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on August 5, following an order made by Senior Parish Judge Lorian Cole Montague that the accused the woman faced the court by noon that day. The order came after a habeas corpus application by her attorney, Tom Tavares Finson, who asked that his client be released from police custody. In his application, Tavares Finson questioned when his client would be placed before the court to answer to the charges which were laid on August 1. It is alleged that Johnson Lee used her BMW motor car to hit her husband on Constant Spring Road, St. Andrew, in 2021. She also reportedly threatened to kill him. She was offered bail with at least two shorties. A condition of her bail is the surrender of her travel documents. She is also to report to the police once weekly and have no contact with the complainants. Central Kingston residents call for Zozo after fire destroys several houses. Despite the conflicting reports about the cause of a fire that destroyed several houses on Smith Lane and James Street in Central Kingston on Monday, residents of the community are calling for the authorities to extend a nearby zone of special operations to the community. The residents are insisting that their houses were firebombed by hoodlums amid ongoing gang violence in the community. Investigators have said that they are yet to identify evidence that the houses were firebombed. But the residents have refuted those claims, maintaining that gunmen had been firing shots in the community at the time of the alleged firebombing. Police, they leave here. But I want me to fly my door, I pee a gunshot. What you tell me, say? Around 10 minutes, took a gunshot. What you tell me, say? A brave one, I can come up and draw my things them out of the fire. We are say, the police are say, them there, them there. Brother, as again, me can't see nothing. You hear me say, but you switch back. They shot them on fire. It is just as close as me, yeah? And you shot them on fire. The fire catch you, yes, sir. So. Say, the fire catch you, yes, sir. So. Oh, but you must suffer this. A foolishness, foolishness. Another resident whose relative lost all her belongings is fearful that there will be another attack. The resident threatened the protest if the government did not implement a zone of operations in the area. And we are called upon Andrew Wellness, the MP, and everybody. Because if we don't get no Zozo around here, we're going to block the road. I will not stop block the road because they're going to come back and each time we get burned out, we have fear work hard and I replace with things. And I like so we're born in our riches. I will pick them traumatized. We're tired of this. So if we don't get it, we're going to block the road. A zone of special operations was declared a stone to throw away in neighboring parade gardens in January. Prime Minister Andrew Holness toured the Smith Lane and the James Street community on Tuesday afternoon to view the destruction. Speaking with reporters during the tour, he said he will re-examine whether there is a need to expand the zone of special operations to Rose Gardens. Uh, we will take a second look at the zone of special operations here to see how best we can expand it given the resources that are here. You will understand, however, that right across Jamaica there are communities in conflict which are calling for the same thing, competing for the same resources. Uh, so that, that really is the challenge. Um, in this particular instance, um, there, there is a, a fear that the residents that, they, that this might have been an act of arson and that there were some shots fired. And so they, what I've seen so far from the official reports doesn't seem to suggest that, but we're not discounting what the residents have said. Superintendent Beres Fort Williams, head of the Kingston Central Division, said that the police have sufficient control of the area and will continue to monitor the space. We'll continue to maintain the presence sufficient enough to hold this place as peaceful as we can. We think we have sufficient control of the space, um, and that's why we'll continue to The Kingston and the St. Andrew Municipal Corporation said assessments are now taking place with a view to providing assistance to residents 
whose houses were destroyed during Monday's blaze. During an interview with the news on Tuesday afternoon, Mayor of Kingston Delroy Williams said a team from the Poor Relief Department, headed by the Parish Disaster Coordinator, visited the victims on Monday. For us, we are just doing an assessment of the the need in terms of getting back the families as to, to normalcy as quick as possible, and so that is what is being done here today. And so at the end of the day, we should have a, a report as to what is required, and then we should know what assistance we can offer in terms of, of, of the structure. And so that is something that we would have to assess, uh, assess sorry, and determine what, what level of assistance we can offer. Uh, what is sure is that we will be offering some assistance. Health Minister receives the results from real cobra test samples. The Ministry of Health has received the results of samples taken from the Rio Cobra last week. The samples were collected from the contaminated river on Thursday. Everton Baker, Director of Environmental Health in the Ministry, told the news on Tuesday afternoon that an analysis of the results is being done to make a determinant on the next step. He said the findings will be disclosed on Wednesday. Residents of several St. Catherine communities are anxiously awaiting the restart of operations at the National Water Commission's Spanish Town treatment plant. Some residents have complained that the lack of water in their communities is at crisis level. We have received the results and we are currently doing an analysis to determine exactly what conclusions we can make. And that will be done um, uh, hopefully for this evening. So the health department along with ourselves, we are just looking at the results, we are looking at the baseline and we are going to make a, a determination. $70 million in pension benefits heading to court. More than $70 million in pension benefits for 161 beneficiaries who are yet to be identified by the Financial Sector Adjustment Company Limited could be handed over to the Supreme Court. In its 2021 annual report that was tabled in Parliament on Friday, the company said it placed advertisements in the press on March 14, 2021 in an attempt to locate beneficiaries of the Jamaica Mutual Life Assurance Society pension scheme. It said that the March 14 advertisement was the fourth out of five required under the Pension Superannuation Funds and Retirement Schemes regulations. In the event that there are beneficiaries who are not located after the five years of consecutive advertisements, the funds remaining will be paid over to the Supreme Court, the report stated. FinSAC was established by the government in January 1997 with a mandate to address the liquidity and the solvency crisis that existed in the financial sector in the early 1990s. During the financial year under review, the company continued to carry out residual activities such as the resolution of litigation matters, sale of remaining assets held by subsidiaries and associated companies, and the pension-related issues. In relation to asset disposal matters, FinSAC's 72% shareholding in Sibonic Group Limited, as at May 31, 2021, was in breach of the Jamaica Stock Exchange's rules as a result of shareholders' net deficit of $2.7 million on its balance sheet position. This could result in the delisting of the company from the Jamaica Stock Exchange, the report stated. Notwithstanding the financial position of CGL, there continues to be interest from potential purchasers to acquire FinSAC's holdings in the company, the report said. For the period ending March 31, 2021, FinSAC recorded a net surplus of $18.5 million, a $13.04 million improvement over the previous year. While Lisa Hanna is leaving representational politics, People's National Party MP Lisa Hanna says that she is leaving representational politics to pave new roads for the generation coming behind us. Hannah advised that party president Mark Golding on Tuesday that she will not offer herself as a candidate for the PNP in the next general election, according to a statement from the 46-year-old whose birthday is in 11 days. Hannah currently represents St. Anne's Southeast in the House of Representatives, a seat she has held since 2007. She came in for criticisms following her narrow win in the PNP bastion in the 2020 general election, in which her party was battered by the governing Jamaica Labour Party. 
That year, she also lost a bid for the PNP presidency. The former Miss World has consistently polled as one of the most popular politicians in Jamaica. It has not always been easy. The political baptisms of fire were often unrelenting and excruciating. I have many times stood alone on principle, which was perceived as unreasonable and misunderstood, she said in her August 9 letter to Golding. Hannah served as a Minister of Youth and Culture in the Portia Simpson Miller administration of 2012 to 2016. She is currently the PNP's spokesperson on foreign affairs. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.